from Bahrain, it's theCUBE, covering AWS Public Sector Bahrain. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services. Welcome back everyone. This is theCUBE's coverage of AWS Summit in Bahrain, the Middle East, where cloud computing is changing the game from startups, business, government, and society. And of course, training and skill development is job number one. We have two great guests here. Issam Hamad, who's the Director of Partnerships and Customer Engagement at Tamkeen. Thanks for joining us, appreciate it. Thank you, Ahmed Ahujuri, CEO of Think Smart for Development and Training. Welcome back, good Thank to you. see you. Good to see you too. Last year we talked, we talked about training being important. Guess what? Number one talking point here this week has been cloud computing degrees, certificates, nice. more training. This has been a real enabler, a real focus area. You guys have been actively involved. Correct. Um, helping, subsidizing, creating incentives. So this is a real push. Is it just the growth? Is it the needed part? Give us an update. Uh, so in terms of our mandate uh, in Temkin, uh, one of our, our key priorities is to actually upskill Bahrainis and make them uh, the number one choice for the private sector. And obviously when you consider the fu future of jobs, uh, you know, there's a huge uh, digital element. And uh, so far we've been able to sort of adapt to market requirements, the growing industry requirements. Uh, so, you know, with the setup of AWS in Bahrain, there is a, an obvious need to build that knowledge and know-how um, within the market. So uh, we've been able to uh, introduce uh, programs to actually develop that knowledge within the market, both in the private sector and to some extent within the public sector as well, uh, whereby we've been able to provide these uh, sort of vendor-specific certifications, uh, in this case um, provided by AWS, whereby we are able to subsidize completely the cost of training for any Bahraini that is looking to get a uh, certified in various fields, such as uh, system architecture, for example, where there is going to be a greater need. Um, if we are uh, really going to be positioning ourselves as a cloud nation, you know, that is really going to be required uh, for the individuals that will drive this uh, sort of uh, revolution and migrate uh, onto the cloud. It's certainly certainly relevant. You guys done a great job, but I'll, I'll tell you in the hallway conversations that I've had, it's trickling down to startups. Um, some side conversations I've had has been, wow, this is really great market. I can find great talent from the university. And I get credits, Tam Keen's been involved. You guys are also trickling, it's trickling down not just for education. Right. It's hitting the accelerator piece. So there's new, kind of like, it's, it's a crossover. Absolutely. And that, is that part of the plan? Definitely. I mean, uh, part of uh, developing our entrepreneurship uh, mindset and capability um, is really to drive forward our agenda to actually make the private sector in Bahrain the engine of growth. And given the size of our economy, uh, you know, startups are required to sort of have that expansion uh, mentality from day one. Uh, they just can't afford to be uh, limited uh, so, uh, you know, there are cloud technologies that really enable companies to scale fast. And, you know, part of this building this sort of know-how in cloud technologies will really help our entrepreneurs uh, get there faster. You know, I love the, you know, it's like a chair. You need, you need all the legs to sit on it, and that's economies sit on these, these legs. Um, cloud computing, reaches up and running, capital markets, they're doing a good job there, pedaling as fast as they can, yeah. uh, getting better and better. The training and support, this is critical because it's not just for the private, there's also the public sector as the cloud nation. All the ministry's got to be cloud by Correct. 2020. That's next year. Yes. <laughs> you guys got to get people trained. Yes. This has been, a, and people are excited by this. Hmm. But training is continuing. I've had, what's your take on this? Because you know, how much training do you give? When is there a crossover? Is there ladders? Is there a gamification? How do you keep track of all this? Uh, we try to have a little bit of, uh, let's say, hybrid uh, training. So uh, we st usually when AWS was in Bahrain and the cloud is there, we started with awareness, not certified training, no, no exam. So that started and we looked at students, we looked at current IT employees who, who are not sure what is the AWS cloud for them. So there is a little bit of fear. 
uh, whether it's government, private sector, startups, and with the support, of course, of the existing uh, programs of Temkin, that made it very, very, very easy. So uh, through awareness program, we got people excited, and we had the, our team at Think Smart at, at the universities, at the job job places, doing roadshows. So it took a while for people to see it. Then we started getting the demand. So people started getting the basic certification, um, the, the awareness for business people, and then it jumped to more advanced training. So people who, who, who were at the beginning reluctant to go for even normal certification, now they say, no, we want to be advanced. We need, they need to know more. So there is excitement. But at the same time, AWS has all of this also online. So if somebody does not want to go to a classroom, he's too busy, especially like people like startups, you can go online. And we, that's where we, our students sometimes go online, come to the classroom. And uh, one of the things that we have built in is that you have challenge with time, the instructor is available. Uh, give, put him an email, give him a call, you come and have, you don't have to attend with a batch. So that kept building up. Now, uh, for a number of Bahrain, yeah, we have, we are, we are on a very high number in terms of number of people we got trained and certified. We are proud of it and we see the demand. So we are now in September and already we have ex exceeded our target. So we're looking forward for a very successful year. We were talking before we came on camera about you know, education, trainings, food for your brain. Yes. Build up those technical muscles. We had um, uh, His Excellency on, Minister of Youth, um, Social Programs, talking about tech athletes. Yes. They got people running triathlons. Where's the tech athletes? You got to get those muscles going. Mm -hmm. You guys are providing that kind of yes. capability. This is the new competitive, you know, all, all joking aside, this is real. Yes. The technical talent is like sports. Yes, that's correct. This is a mindset, not a freebie, mm -hmm. free education, sink or swim. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is the ethos. Yeah. In the culture, correct. How correct. Are the, how is the how is the young generation responding to this um, challenge, opportunity? Um, it's actually been interesting, um, you know, to look at sort of. Let's start with the gap between academia and industry. So we're narrowing in, and we're actually closing in that gap. Uh, so the new generation is actually very proactive and not depending on academia to provide what is required for the future of jobs or to actually develop a business. Um, so they are actually very active in seeking out uh, this information and it's readily, readily available today. Now, the examples I use from Temkin, these are very sort of formal platforms available for any Bahraini, but as you know now, it's, it's very easy to find this information to actually upskill yourself. And this is what we're saying, you know, the, the younger generation is very proactively in seeking this information. Uh, yeah. online, anywhere. I yeah. think you guys are smart. I think you're on it because one of the things I see in the U.S. at least is uh, some old reliance, old dogma or habits or bad habits around thinking of education as a linear thing. Yeah. Digital is different. Exactly. You can certainly take whatever path you want and if you can augment, say, education in university or training yeah. with a nonlinear progression. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You got either educate, you got YouTube, you got all kinds of things happening around yeah. learning. Absolutely. The younger generation, they want that. They don't yes. want the, you know, sit there, computer-based training, press one to continue. Correct. It, that's over. Correct. Those days are over. Yes, especially since we're pushing for a more uh, entrepreneurship kind of mindset where you actually go and create work for yourself. So people actually go and upskill themselves. So they don't actually wait for this to come their way. They go and seek it. Yeah. Okay, so we're back to the stool. Got the, got the legs of the stool. Got the capabilities with the cloud. You got the culture shift happening. You got the training, and you got the entrepreneurship. Now you got to sit in the chair. It's got to not break. That's the entrepreneurship. So you got to measure to results. At the end of the day, it's about the results. How are you guys looking at success? What does success look like as everyone starts to level up in the entrepreneurial game of tech athletics? So, so, so the program that we developed, and that's why we wanted to make it unique, not more of a classroom training, we gave uh, candidates who join our program options. They can join and try target a career that I'm going to be a tech guy somewhere in a government or a private uh, enterprise. And there was also the entrepreneurship track. No, you're going to be a developer. You're going to be a gaming developer. You're going to have your own media company, whatever you want. So 
And so we give them soft skill training, we give them entrepreneurship guidance, they have mentors with them available all the time. And at the beginning, when we started two years back, there were less reluctant to take the to take this track, the entrepreneurship track. Now it's changed, the, the formula is changing actually. And I need to note something that a female were more interested in the entrepreneurship track because they them, give them the, uh, the opportunity to work from home, develop solutions, they don't need to go to an office, they have the freedom yeah. they need. So we see... We Diversity see, has increased yes, with entrepreneurship. Yes. Yeah. So it has completely changed the mindset going two years back, not 20 years back. We're looking at even generations now graduating from university. And, and one of the biggest challenge was university because universities are not teaching this. So we, yeah. it took us a while to give the awareness, as I said earlier, to the universities, even to the university president. And now it's all sold. Everybody yeah. speaks the same language. And I think this is the, the, the success of the leadership in Bahrain, where they were able to build an ecosystem. Temkin, the private sector, the government, all are speaking the same language. So now the students, the Bahraini individuals, start yeah. feeling this uh, change. Well, it's hard. I mean, you guys, we're talking about, we live this every day. You're certainly, guys are succeeding. If I'm the government and I'm preaching agility and digital transformation, mm -hmm. if I'm not doing it, what kind of example is that? Exactly. Very true. This is really yes. the culture. Yes. Um, and I can appreciate that. I respect that. I think that's really the way to do it. You've got to lead from the top. i got to ask you guys about community because one of the things that we've been talking about, um, and not really comparing to Silicon Valley, but looking at success entrepreneurial formulas like Silicon Valley, which can be replicated locally in its own Bahrain way, is about people and community. How is the community developed? Because you've got two years going back on diversity has increased, entrepreneurs are changing. What's the community like? What's the community nurturing strategy? How do you guys see that culture here? Because this is going to be a community-driven, data-driven, results-driven yes. world. Yes. Uh, so, you know, we like to say that we have one of the most connected entrepreneurship ecosystems in the world. Now, we can say that because we're a small market. <laughs> Bahrain is a small place, so everyone really lo knows what everyone else is doing. So in terms of, uh, you know, what the ecosystem is providing to the community, uh, I think we have good joint efforts uh, in actually building up the community. And now we're seeing much more participation from the community uh, compared to, I would say, five years ago, for example, where uh, we're actually seeing, um, you know, people pursuing entrepreneurship as a path uh, versus uh, getting employed within the government, within a financial institution, for example. So uh, I think the best testimony to this was the creation of Startup Bahrain. So this was a community initiative, uh, initially uh, spearheaded or initiated by the Economic Development Board. And it is a collective of uh, government organizations, uh, SME development organizations and startups to actually push this sort of entrepreneurship agenda and startup agenda forward. So we have a very successful case study with, case, uh, with Startup Bahrain and uh, we can actually show for it in terms of participation of startups and even maybe legacy institutions like universities that are now jumping on board and actually contributing, you know, uh, somehow. To, to the community. Yeah, it's been, it's been fun to watch. I think uh, you can always do better, as we heard from um, uh, the folks here on theCUBE all day today, but everyone pretty much generally agrees it's going in the right direction. Yeah. The question I have to ask you guys is, where, where is the work that needs to get done um, still on the table? What, what's the key areas? I think the one key element that I think is a must based on what we have achieved now, when we talk about successful startups, successful entrepreneurship, we really need to connect, have a bridges with say, things like Silicon Valley, because Bahrain market is small, even the GCC market is small. So our startups should have a clearer uh, access to larger market, to com big companies. Now they have access to AWS, Intel, HP, whoever, uh, within that international market. That's the only way you can take your product from the labs or ideas to the international market. I think this is an area which requires good development and based on the successful, gradual success yeah. we have seen, I think this is now the most important step moving forward. Mm. Is to connect these other hubs. Yes. Where there's a lot of collaboration because you know companies have engineering teams, they have certain teams mm. and you guys will get a bulk of that. This is the, this is the plan. Exactly. Yes. 
Yeah, so I areas? think you, you would probably agree that maybe another gap is a private sector investment. Yeah. Uh, so there's a lot of money going around from uh, the public sector to provide grants, uh, subsidized financing, etc. We're looking to have more VCs established in our region, to have more angel investment, uh, more private sector uh, sort of contribution uh, to the startup scene in Bahrain. And I think going back to something important you mentioned earlier, Ahmed, is the awareness. We still need to build more awareness around what kind of technologies will help companies, startups scale. Uh, there might be the will there, but they're not completely aware of how to get what there. What kind of hurdles would you look for in a partnership with a VC early stage? You think in 10 million, 20 million dollar fund? Is there a number? Is there like a filter? Uh, very or good question. <laughs> I would say uh, across you know the spectrum. Uh, definitely early stage. Uh, although we are addressing that gap. Uh, as public sector through grants and other means of uh, providing capital. But I think we do require some private sector contribution at that specific stage, uh, early stage. Well, we're certainly in Palo Alto and Silicon Valley. You need any cross connection. Definitely. You guys are CUBE alumni now, VIPs. Yes. <laughs> You're in the network now, so feel free to knock Thank on our you. door. We want to help as well. We appreciate that. Thanks so much for everything you guys are doing. I think this is going to be a historic moment looking back at this time in history, new region, revitalization. This is a theme, and it's not just money making, that's one piece, I like yeah. that piece, but you know, it's impact to citizens. Correct. This is a big part of the culture. Mm, yes. So, thanks for coming on, appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. The for Cube coverage, we are here in Bahrain for AWS Summit. Stay tuned for more coverage after this short break.